This is Special Prosecutor Larry Clayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth, for competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty, for the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Clayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman. Lots of news this week. A very important show. I always say that. I don't do what Hannity says, late-breaking news. I don't look to the government so-called government to mete out justice. I look to ourselves, we the people, and that's why we have Freedom Watch, because Freedom Watch Watch does today what I used to do when I founded and ran Judicial Watch. We bring hard-hitting cases. We have actual clients. We're not just getting documents. We get documents, too, but we use those documents to bring about justice in lawsuits and in citizens' grand juries. And this week, a particular example, case in point. You won't see this at this out of Judicial Watch. You'll see it out of Freedom Watch and in my private capacity. And this week, and by the way, I'm proud of having founded Judicial Watch, but I'm not proud of what's happened to it ever since then. It's become basically just a a PR agency for getting documents and getting on Kennedy or getting on Fox and then boasting, pounding your chest. Fitton does that all the time. But, you know, I'm sick of it. I really need to get justice for the American people. I need your support. I need to do what I can to restore this country to the vision of our founding fathers. And what's destroying this country, among other things, is the rank dishonesty. You know, it was John Adams who said, I've said this many times, in the days leading up to the revolution, and he said it three days before the Declaration of Independence was signed and ratified, that without ethics, morality, and religion, doesn't matter how many times you change your rulers or forms of government, you will not have a lasting liberty. The ethics in this country have hit a rock bottom. The rank illegality has hit a rock bottom. The political establishment in this country are basically vile on both sides of the aisle. They lie to the American people. They lie to themselves. It's become a reality show. If you're left, you go on CNN or MSNBC. If you're right, you try to go on Fox, although Fox is moving left. And this is what we have. So it falls to Larry Clayman and our clients to do the job. There's no other lawyer in this country, and I say that with all modesty and truth, who will stick his neck out like I stick my neck out. And we did it this week again. And George Zimmerman is a good case in point. Trayvon Martin was no little kid, contrary to the pictures that you've seen that were published at the time. George Zimmerman was stalked by Trayvon Martin. His head was being smashed into concrete. Thank God George Zimmerman had a legal firearm under his Second Amendment rights to defend himself. Now, we're not happy that Trayvon died. We don't want him to die. But Trayvon was a very troubled person. Uh, He was in gangs. He had, partake, he had participated in, in taking drugs. I mean, he, he, had, he was a problem with his girlfriend at the time, uh, Brittany Eugene. And he was upset that evening. And he took it out on George Zimmerman, and he wasn't of right mind. Now, because of the vigilantes in this country, you've got race-baiting vigilantes like Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and Black Lives Matter and the New Black Panthers Party. They convinced the state of Florida, after initially they weren't going to charge George Zimmerman, to indict him. And he was indicted for second-degree murder. Went through a terrible period of his life. You're going to hear more about it from Joel Gilbert, a great film writer and writer who's going to be on in our third segment. He's been on before. And he was tried, and he was acquitted by a jury. Basta, as they say in Italian. Stop. That's enough. He went through this hard period. It destroyed him. Uh, But he was acquitted. And after he was acquitted, people didn't stop. They continued to beat up on him. 
and they continued to use him as a whipping boy. And people have actually shot at him. One guy tried to kill him at close range. That person was convicted of attempted murder. He's doing 20 years in prison in my home state of Florida. Now, along comes the 2020 presidential elections. You've got little Petey Buttigieg, who is actually a leftist. You know, his, his dad was actually communist, and he's not that far off. Frankly, he's not much different than Bernie Sanders, who is a communist. In fact, just in the debate this week, Bloomberg, one of the few things he said that was coherent, he basically called Bernie a communist, which he is. Let's just call it straight up. And Elizabeth Warren, also out there, both of these individuals haven't been doing well with the black community, with the African-American community. You know, African-Americans are very discerning, generally speaking. They understand what goes on at street level. They know when people are lying. They know when people aren't sincere. They know when people are pandering to them, trying to get votes. So these people are desperate, Buttigieg and Warren. And in fact, the two of them should know better because Buttigieg's a minority. He's gay. And Elizabeth Warren claims she's part Indian. Of course, she isn't, but she thinks she's a minority and has used that, you know, with regard to teaching assignments and getting into schools and things like that. So what do they do on the 25th birthday of Trayvon Martin? May his soul rest in peace. They beat up on Zimmerman again. They call him a white supremacist. They call him a racist. They say, well, you know, Trayvon Martin would be around on his 25th birthday if it wasn't for white supremacy, if it wasn't for racism, if it wasn't for gun violence. They're obviously talking about George Zimmerman. And I'm going to explain in our second segment how you prove defamation. It's important for you to understand that because I become an expert in defamation, unfortunately. This is mostly what I do these days as a plaintiff's lawyer, both in my private capacity and in my capacity as chairman and general counsel of Freedom Watch because these kinds of things destroy people. It's not just George Zimmerman. I have other clients that have been destroyed. Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Chief Justice Roy Moore, Laura Loomer, many, many others. They become radioactive, the Bundys. Because, and when they get into a courtroom with a politicized federal judge in particular, the federal judge hides under the table. It doesn't matter whether it's an Obama, Clinton, or Bush appointee. They don't want these people in their courtroom because it may hurt their chances to get invited to parties in Georgetown, not be part of the Washington Club, or getting get higher appointments later on if they actually have to rule in their favor. And of course, they find reasons to get rid of cases under a, a misreading of a case, Bell Atlantic versus Twomby, where they think, they don't really think, but it's a manipulation, that they get to decide what's plausible and not. Well, you know what? Our founders put juries in, into effect to our Constitution because they don't want judges making decisions. They knew how corrupt the judges of the court of St. James were under King George III. And these federal judges that exist today are equally as corrupt. Generally speaking, there are some exceptions, very few, very, very few. I maybe have known five in 42 years of being a lawyer who have the courage to, to do it straight in these kinds of cases. But they'll dismiss these cases because they don't want it in their courtroom. But in state courts where judges are elected, such as in Florida courts, judges actually have to answer to the people. And they're more civil, and they treat lawyers better, they treat the private parties better, generally speaking, and they don't get appointed because they know the president or a senator, generally speaking, and they try to play it straight. So this week, we brought a lawsuit on behalf of George Zimmerman. We're asking for $245 million in compensatory damages for actual damage. Later, we will seek to add to the complaint claims for punitive damages. These people are worth a lot of money. You know, contrary to Bernie claiming that he's a man of the people, we didn't sue Bernie. If he, if he sticks his neck out like these two people did, we will as well, or any other politician or anyone in, in general. But they have the money, okay? And the only way you're going to stop them is to sock them in the pocketbook, to literally bankrupt them. So we sued Buttigieg. We, we sued Warren for defamation and widely publicized every major network and, and even the left couldn't be too critical of it because it was so blatant that this was defamation that they basically played it straight. Do a Google search or go to LarryClayman.com. See the articles that were written. See the interviews 
or go to freedomwatchusa.org. I posted them there because it is a matter of public interest as well, even though I'm doing this in my private capacity. But this is something that really needs to be done. Our foot needs to be put down. Destroying people with words is as bad as destroying them with a club because it, it makes them radioactive. They can't function. George Zimmerman doesn't like to go out in public. And when he does, he, he sometimes goes out in disguises because people have tried to kill him. People have threatened me for representing him. And this is why it's important that you support people like Zimmerman who are sticking their neck out, who are trying to change the narrative. Now, Roger Stone, he's another one. Okay, Stone defamed my client, Dr. Jerome Corsi, and me because he feared that somehow Corsi was going to testify against him in the criminal prosecution. Corsi has never said a bad word about Stone. But Stone couldn't resist, much like he couldn't resist with regard to the matters for which he has now been indicted on five perjury counts, one obstruction of justice, and one witness tampering. He can't hold himself back. So Stone goes out and defames Corsi. Corsi wasn't even called in the trial. Stone didn't call one witness in the trial. There's all kinds of false information out there, even in the conservative media, that Stone didn't get a fair trial. How do you not get a fair trial when you don't even call a witness or present real evidence? He essentially conceded his guilt at the trial. So people like so-called Judge Napolitano, who frankly is a disgrace, he's trying to say that Stone didn't get a fair trial because he's trying to win back a few of his conservative and libertarian friends after he's alienated everybody with his attacks on Trump because Trump wouldn't make him a Supreme Court justice. Thank God he didn't. This guy is a halfwit. But Stone went out and defamed Corsi, and we brought lawsuits against Stone. And we took Stone's deposition. You can watch it at LarryClayman.com, or I also posted it on FreedomWatch.org. You can see how depositions work. You can see Stone cursing at me, calling me names, you know, in effect defaming me again in certain areas. You know, but we won't tolerate this nowhere, no matter where it comes from. I don't care if it comes from the left. I don't care if it comes from the right. I don't care if it comes from the center. You know, we have to have honesty in this country. I'll be right back. Dangerous. I don't care. Use the court and the law. Lethal. This is bad. Special prosecutor. Very bad. Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Now, the world faces a threat of coronavirus. Uh, China says it's already infected about 80,000 people. If China says it's 80,000, you can multiply that by 100 times, okay? You don't get the truth out of China. You know, even less than you get out of our government here. And we hide stuff, too. You know, med cow disease a number of years ago. My dad was in the meat business. He told me it was all over the United States. We didn't report that. Department of Agriculture suppressed it to protect, you know, the beef producers. But this is really a threat to civilization, potentially. And we need to get the truth. We're talking about defamation in the earlier segment. Now we're talking about getting the truth. But quite apart from the truth, where did the coronavirus come from? Everybody's liking, wants to blame China now for this. Now, now, maybe the sanitary conditions in China aren't very good. Who knows? I mean, I've been to China. I've been to Taiwan. Sometimes they could be better. They could be better in a lot of different places around this country. But I want to pose something which sounds way out. But I, I think it needs to be considered is that there are a lot of articles out there on the Internet and videos from scientists and others, respected people, who are talking about how potentially we have been visited by aliens from other planets. I'm not talking about Ill illegal aliens running across the Mexican border. Now, if there are UFOs here, even unmanned UFOs, or if they've been here for a number of years, or if, in fact, there are meteors that came into our our, uh, our world on the Earth with microbes from other solar systems, potentially other planets. This could be something that was started by something outside of this world. And I don't want to be alarmist because 
Many of the people that I know, Stephen Greer, who wrote this movie, Unacknowledged, and wrote a book, you should watch it, it's on Netflix, where a lot of whistleblowers have come forward and talked about how, yes, UFOs do exist, how there were alien bodies found at Roswell, how one of them survived for a while, how they were put on ice, how we still have them, how we're hiding the truth. Many countries admit that we've been visited, that there are UFOs, Great Britain, Russia, others, Japan. Just recently, a craft was found off the coast of Japan. Well, if that's the case, it could be that an alien civilization, either by design or inadvertently, infected our, our world, our Earth, with a virus that will destroy all of us. Could it be like War of the Worlds when the Martians came, you know, H.G. Wells, and they had a disease? and the world was about ready to get destroyed. Now, I raise this. It sounds fantastic, but it's something that needs to be considered. And that's why we need to get the truth out of our government. It now threatens civilization. It's going to have a big impact on the economy, and we need to know that. Now, let's talk a little bit about defamation. How do you prove defamation? And I'll be brief. We're going to have Joel Gilbert on in the third segment. Is that something is either knowingly untrue or a reckless disregard for the truth. If you're a public figure, George Zimmerman really isn't a public figure because he, he was made a public figure. He's a qualified public figure, as lawyers say. But even if you're a public figure, if you can show that it was done intentionally or with reckless disregard for the truth, you're in hot water. So Buttigieg and Warren are in hot water because they knew that George Zimmerman was acquitted on a defense of self-defense, and they chose to use him to whip up votes in the black community because they're doing badly with blacks. Blacks see through their phoniness. Blacks don't want to have anything to do with them. So they're desperate, and they need the black vote, the radical black vote, because most blacks are not radical. Most are normal people like everybody else in this country. They're not looking to destroy anything. In fact, I think they have a greater sense of, of right and wrong in many ways than, than, than other people because they've been persecuted all these years. But this is something that needs to be understood. These cases are powerful. And if we go to a jury, Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren are toast. They'll be living with a tin cup on the streets of God knows where else, wherever they go in, into hiding. I'm going to be back with Joel Gilbert to talk about his great book and movie, The Trayvon Hoax, and what we're trying to do to bring the races together by bringing these lawsuits or George Zimmerman. We're not trying to divide like Buttigieg and Warren. We're trying to bring all of our brothers together. So I'll be right back. Until then, go to freedomwatchusa.org, join our Justice League and contribute, and then see our lawsuit for Zimmerman at LarryClayman.com. that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor, Larry Klayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to FreedomWatchUSA.org and donate. I'm back with my friend, with a colleague, with someone who's an extremely talented filmmaker in Hollywood and also a great writer. And Joel's the one who uncovered the Trayvon hoax. And you can find it. He'll tell you where to find it and how to get the book and all that other stuff. But I want your analysis on what Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren did, because as you know, we brought a lawsuit this week on behalf of George Zimmerman for defamation. It was three types of defamation. Defamation per se, because... Zimmerman was accused of committing a crime, of being a murderer, of being a white supremacist, of being someone who engages in gun violence, which has a certain connotation. It was general defamation, and it was also defamation by implication under Florida law. That's when, you know, it can even be true, but if it creates something which gets you to experience great humiliation and ridicule in the community, 
It's also actionable. But everything taken together here is very strong defamation. He was called a white supremacist. He was called a racist. He said he was engaging in gun violence rather than using, under the Second Amendment, his rights of self-defense with a firearm. And these people need to be held accountable. And I've always said, Joel, people said, why do you bring so many lawsuits, Larry? Why are you suing presidents? Why are you suing presidential candidates? Because you might as well start at the top. And if you start at the top and hold them accountable, then the rest of the country can take heed. But I want to get your take on it, Joel, and you know, take it back in time to what you uncovered here with regard to George Zimmerman and also what Zimmerman is trying to accomplish here on behalf of the American people to unite the races, to get these race baiters out of politics and out of our country in general. So white, black, green, yellow, blue, whoever, we can live together and make this country a better place. Okay, well, thanks for having me, Larry. Well, I came out, of course, as you mentioned, with my uh, film and book of the same name, The Trayvon Hoax, Unmasking the Witness Fraud that Divided America, a few months ago. And the, the Trayvon Hoax is two things. It's the substitution of a fake witness, uh, this girl named Rachel Gentel. People remember her from the Zimmerman trial. She's the reason the Zimmerman even got indicted and arrested in the first place. And what I did is I proved and showed that she was not the real girlfriend, not the real girl on the phone with Trayvon that the uh, Martin family came up with out of the blue in order to get their men arrested, even though he'd been exonerated by the police. And the Trayvon hoax is also the, uh, the hoax that the media and sometimes the DOJ and the government plays on Americans every day, promoting this uh, concept that there's armed white men in the streets and police that want to shoot people because of their darker skin tones. And this narrative has been prevalent since 2012. It was promoted heavily by Barack Obama, the Holder, Eric Holder DOJ. It had a lot to do with politics because the uh, election was not in the tank for Obama in 2012. And they used Trayvon Martin, they used George Zimmerman to divide the country uh, through this ridiculous narrative that's gone on since. The Black Lives Matter uh, movement was formed, uh, admittedly, because of supposedly George uh, Zimmerman's acquittal. Uh, at first they said, we just want an arrest. We only want an arrest. And once he was acquitted by a jury of his peers, they said that wasn't good enough. So I saw with great interest your lawsuit and that, they, uh, that Pete Buttigieg, I was just horrified when I saw his, uh, his tweet, for example. He said, uh, Trayvon would have been 25 today. Then he said, how many 25th birthdays have been stolen from us by white supremacy, gun violence, prejudice, and fear? And then he signs off hashtag Black Lives Matter. Like, oh, my God. Buttigieg knows that uh, Zimmerman was acquitted. I'm sure he's heard about your lawsuit from December, last December where you actually highlighted a lot of the uh, information I had uncovered in my book and film that the entire arrest in the first place was, was fraudulent and illegal. It was a simple self-defense case, not stand your ground. And these politicians uh, like Buttigieg and Warren are continuing the tradition of Obama where they uh, promote this uh, – ridiculous lie about George Zimmerman that somehow he was engaging in gun violence, which is essentially the random use of, you know, illegal weapons and hurting innocent people, as opposed to self-defense. And then the Zimmerman Hispanic kid, he uh, speaks fluent Spanish. That was his first language. He's a minority advocate, Obama supporter, and he's throwing out their white supremacist again. So I certainly agree with you, and I hope to see your lawsuit succeed, because I think I agree if you can get Buttigieg and Warren to retract and maybe uh, pay some damages for this nonsense. Maybe it can change the tone of the of the dialogue and stop using Trayvon Martin for for these purposes. Well, don't don't count on them retracting or apologizing. They had a chance last night, and I thought maybe, excuse me, last week with the presidential debate, I thought maybe some questions would be asked. Every major media operation reported this lawsuit, yet nobody asked a question and put them on the spot. But I did send to them on behalf of George Zimmerman a demand for a retraction and an apology, and they stiff-armed me. No response at all. Instead, after I filed the lawsuit, they send me an email saying, contact our lawyer at Perkins Coy. Of course, you know Perkins Coy is very infamous, that law sure. firm. And they're actually intervening on behalf of the Democratic Party down in Alabama in defamation lawsuits that 
well, I brought I think, along uh, with my co-counsel. Uh, wait, 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 Melissa Isaac. Melissa Isaac, let me finish here, uh, for Chief Justice uh, Roy Moore, uh, they seem to be everywhere. And, of course, they were involved in Fusion GPS and, and that kind of thing. But they stiff-armed us. They, they, they don't want to apologize. So they're going to need to be taught the hard way. Go ahead, Joel. Yeah, I was going to say Perkins Coie, as you said, they were involved in funneling money from the DNC to Chris Steele to the Russian government to uh, interfere in the U.S. elections in uh, 2016. Of course, they're famous for helping Obama uh, defend any inquiries about his birth certificate. People wondered, why won't you release it? And they were there for him. So they've got a long history of defending uh, Democrats uh, sometimes for for reasons that are pretty nefarious, especially with the Fusion GPS. Uh, but the thing that people I want people to understand is the division was most of this last six years, seven years of this racial division was mostly harmful to black Americans. They suffered the most from this, from this type of division. Most of my emails uh, the most positive ones come from black teenagers. I'll tell you one from a girl. She said, uh, I grew up on this Trayvon Martin stuff, and I have a black son, and I was afraid for him to grow up in America. But now I want to thank you. I realize we got played. And black people are very much understanding uh, my film and my book. They understand how this entire case got manipulated by the media and by politicians really just to – uh, divide them and get them to come over to the Democrat Party. And I find it particularly disgusting that Warren and Pete Buttigieg, who are both groveling for African-American votes because they don't have a lot of support in the black community, uh, Buttigieg especially, I think he fired a uh, the first black uh, police commissioner in his city up in uh, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, he's famous for also saying all lives matter in response to Black Lives Matter uh, initially. So they're groveling, and the way they grovel is to try to incite hatred, hatred towards George Zimmerman or tell people uh, that there's random gun violence that are killing you. It's really disgusting politics, and I'm hopeful that my film and uh, the Zimmerman's lawsuits will also uh, make sure people understand what really happened in that case, because Every, all this division started there. Black Lives Matter started. The Ferguson, Missouri stuff, hands up, don't shoot, another big lie that the media went with. Uh, the Ferguson effect, which caused a lack of end of proactive policing in black communities, homicides up 33 percent. Even you look at the Kavanaugh case, fake witnesses, fake whistleblower. It all started with this case in the modern era, fake news. So I'm still very hopeful. The more people that see my uh, film and read the book, uh, they're realizing that this entire media narrative that the politicians, as you see with Warren and Buttigieg, are still uh, promoting is false. It's, it's, it's a hoax. And we don't need to live a lie. And this idea of racial division, uh, gun violence and racism is, is a complete lie. I grew up in Tennessee in the 70s and 80s. Black and white kids were all friends never heard the n-word no racial division and the democrats and media want us to believe that 50 years later we all became racist and that's how they're they're using still using trayvon martin to this day and zimmerman to promote these false narratives well there's racism uh joe i agree with 99 percent of what you said but there is racism out there sure there's racism out there but it's not widespread okay particularly no, the among, oh, among the youth you look, 0.001 percent. There will always be some jerks on all sides, but that's not yes, what we're all and about. That, and that's what and that's what I'm saying is is that this George Zimmerman is being used as the whipping boy, the sacrificial lamb. He's become synonymous with white supremacy and racism. He can't even show his face in public. He's been shot at. One guy was convicted, got 20 years in prison in a Florida jail. Okay, and you can't allow this to happen. Now, Give us a little background, because you did a little research we were talking about this week on Pete Buttigieg. He's no moderate, okay? He's a complete fraud. And, no, uh, uh, of course, yeah, yeah tell, tell Look, us what uh, you know about his, his background on the left. Buttigieg, uh, this guy, his, first of all, of course, I did a lot of research on Obama's background, showing that his, who his ideological influences were, who he hung out with, and who his political uh, mentors were. So Buttigieg's father was not only a Marxist professor, he 
translated the works of Antonio Gramsci. He held, head up, headed up the Antonio Gramsci Society about how to corrupt democracy by corrupting the institutions. That was Buttigieg's uh, mentor. He idolized his father. Uh, so Buttigieg basically is a lightweight. He tried to run for, I think, state treasurer in Indiana and lost, always one foot out the door, always trying to seek higher office. Even his military uh, experience, he never went to boot camp. He never went to any kind of military training. He just went right into this reserve group six months in Afghanistan. He even wrote about how he admired John Kerry, and he wanted to get some kind of military experience like John Kerry had, which was very minimal, so he could use that later in a political career. But you see uh, Buttigieg running around talking like he's some kind of war hero, when all he did was uh, drive a jeep, never used his weapon, never took the safety off, just drove back and forth, which is very normal. And uh, he talks about, I had 191, you know, rides in a jeep, as if it's a sortie in a in a fighter plane. So where was he in the jeep? Joe? An opportunist. Where was he in the jeep? He was in Kabul, just going back and forth from headquarters to the uh, to the camp. Apparently, uh, never had any combat. It was he actually wrote that he was imitating John Kerry. Well, I, I understand that, but on the other hand, let me just be a little devil's advocate. You drive in a jeep in Kabul, you can get blown up by a road mine. I, you know, I don't hold that against the guy. What I do hold is that he's a cheap hack politician. You see. And, you know, that's something which I think is very serious. Now, talk about Elizabeth Warren. What do you know about her? Well, Elizabeth Warren, of course, she's uh, been that Harvard professor. Her entire history is uh, misrepresenting her background, whether it's her Indian, alleged Indian heritage, which blew up in her face, that she used to get jobs at Harvard and take advantage of, of minority positions. Uh, of course, she claimed the thing about uh, getting fired because she was pregnant. So she has a long history of trying to identify as a minority or as a victim. And this is very prevalent in the Democrat candidates. Everybody's some kind of a victim or been discriminated against. And uh, she also tweeted about Trayvon Martin saying that, uh, and about Zimmerman, we need to end gun violence and racism and so on. So she's into the division also. She's looking for black support. And I think it's very misguided. I don't think black people are going to be... Uh, uh, manipulated by this like they have in the past. I, I agree with you. And, Joel, you've done fantastic work. Um, this is, you know, important what you're doing. And, you know, I want to make people to understand we didn't bring these cases to influence the political world. We didn't try to do it to defeat them. They're defeated anyway, these people. It really doesn't matter. They're like, they're like Joe Biden. But what you're doing is to get to the truth. And that's important. It doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum is involved or or what part of our society is. We will hold them accountable. So I want to thank you for everything we've done. Hang on for the last segment because I, because I want you to identify where people can get your book and get your uh, video of the Trayvon hoax. It's important that people watch it. And I'll be right back with the verdict of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. was a trial lawyer, he sliced him and diced him. People used to ask me, Larry, what caused you to start Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch, given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk? In a meat packing plant. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. A very special prosecutor, Larry Klayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Fellow Patriots friends and supporters, uh, I want you to watch Joel's film, okay? I'm not trying to hawk it for him or sell it for him, but it's important that you understand the facts here because this is a case study on how people are destroyed for their own political purpose and for the purpose of these vigilantes, these radical groups. And there are radical groups on all sides of the political spectrum. There's more on the left, obviously. I mean, they want to take this country over. They want to turn us into a Soviet-style gulag. I thought this week in the debate with uh, the Democratic candidates, you know, Bloomberg took a beating, but he said one thing, and, and I, I give him credit for this. He called Bernie Sanders a communist. That's what Bernie Sanders is. He wants a communist state. He wants total state control. He doesn't want there to be any private enterprise. 
And that's what they're trying to do, take this country over. And you saw an example on that stage of what's going to happen if the left does take this country over. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but if they take it over, they're all going to start fighting with each other. And the country is going to come unglued at the seams because these various factions have very little in common with themselves other than they all want to obtain ultimate power. But, Joel, tell us where they can get your video, where they can get your book, and tell us about you know a lot of the things that you have done. I want to save about a minute at the end, and our producer, our fine producer, Al Peterson, will tell us. But uh, tell us what else you've done out there because you're one of the few people out there that, that is unafraid that will tell the truth. Thank you. Well, uh, I want to add to what you said is uh, in my one of my previous films called There's No Place Like Utopia. That's kind of like a Michael Moore style film where I run around the country speaking to people in progressive cities where Democrats have been controlling for 50, 60 years. And I find out that no one is progressing. Everyone is regressing. Drug cultures, terrible education, single mothers, no jobs, high taxes. And uh, one of the people I interviewed was former KGB uh, spy and defector named Konstantin Prebijinsky, and he told me it was always the uh, strategy of the communists to use black people, to use minorities in America to divide the country. And he said that communists and leftists, they considered black Americans to be the raw material for revolution, meaning they could use them to achieve their goals. And Barack Obama was in on that. You know, he was a... Uh, came out in New York, was brought to Chicago by the communist and socialist groups uh, to run the Developing Communities Project in Chicago. The entire goal was to get Obama to go to the black churches and bring them into these uh, socialist causes. The black people of that era wanted nothing to do with this Marxist nonsense because they were religious people, and Marxism was uh, a movement that rejected God. It was atheist. Uh, they also believed in the Christian concept of love thy neighbor, and socialism and Marxism taught war between the classes. So Obama was in on it from the beginning to use and recruit black people to rub salt in the wounds of minorities. That was another one of their slogans. And Joel, I mean, we have about two minutes left. Uh, tell us where yeah. they can get your film. That's a very good recitation, and we'll Thank pick you. it up in another show. But let's let them so that, watch this film sure. with so that one, Trayvon. Right. That one is Obama's Real Father dot com, Dreams from My Real Father. And the movie we've been talking about most of the time here, which is also a book, uh, go to the Trayvon dot com, the Trayvon dot com. Start with the trailer, and then you can live stream the movie right there, or you can jump over on the link to Amazon and get the book or the DVD, and uh, you'll, it'll change your life. It's a mind-blowing experience when you see what they really did in the Zimmerman case. They used a fake witness, and people covered it up. Well, and that's important. And I said at the outset of this show, the truth is important. It's paramount, okay? Not just in our laws with regard to not testifying falsely, but this country will come unglued. If the rampant dishonesty is not rectified in, in politics and other parts of our society and parts of our world, people can no longer tell the truth. They don't want to tell the truth. And you are telling the truth, Joel. So I thank you for what you're doing. And we at Freedom Watch are doing our part with our leftist media strike force and other strike forces to try to bring about truth and justice. We'll be back next week with another edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. Until then, the verdict is, get up off the couch, put the popcorn down, and get to work. Join Freedom Watch's Justice League at freedomwatchusa.org and join us in our citizens' peaceful and legal revolution. Until then, God bless you, God bless your family, God bless America, and God save America. And listen to our daily podcast each day with an update on what's going on in this country and the world. We'll be back next week.